In this unit circle survival guide, we're going to find the exact value of the cotangent of 5 pi over 6 using SARC. So SARC's just an acronym so that you can keep all your information organized. Breaking it down before we get started, S stands for sketch the angle, so we really just care about the terminal side. A stands for ASTC, another nice little acronym to help you know which strict functions are positive in each quadrant. R stands for reference triangle, so we'll get the reference angle and then the triangle and coordinates that go with that. And then the C stands for calculate. So we're going to do this for the cotangent of five pi over six. Okay, so first we're going to sketch our angle. It's positive, so it's counterclockwise rotation. And five pi over six is less than two pi, so we know it's less than one rotation. Uh, so we're ready to start sketching here. Here's zero, here's pi. Sometimes it helps to rewrite pi with a common denominator to your angles, so 6 pi over 6, because I think it makes it really easy to see that then 5 pi over 6 is just a little bit less rotation, and that terminal side must be here in the second quadrant. Once you know your angles in the second quadrant, you're ready for the next step. So A for ASTC, think all students take classes. And this is going to help you label your quadrants so you know which trig functions are positive in each. And then you can use that to make your determination on is your final answer positive or negative? So in quadrant one, we have A, S, T, C. So we're just working our way around there. All are positive in quadrant one. Sine and its reciprocal cosecant are the only ones that are positive in quadrant two. So let's pause right here. We're trying to find the cotangent. That's not the sine or the cosecant. So we know our final answer must be negative. So let's make note of that so we don't forget and then from here on out, we're going to just use positive values because we don't really care what quadrant it's in anymore. We've already taken that information and used it for what we needed. Okay, so that just eliminates a lot of possibility for errors. We know the cotangent in the second quadrant will be negative. Before we move on, if your angle was in quadrant three, only tangent and cotangent are positive there. And in quadrant four, cosine and secant are the positive functions. All right, now we're ready for step three. Let's find our reference angle so we know which triangle and coordinates we're working with here. So the reference angle is the amount of rotation from the terminal side of an angle to the x-axis. So between five pi over six and six pi over six, we must have pi over six rotation. Okay, so that is in radians. Normally our special right triangles, we talk in terms of degrees. So that's the same thing as 30 degrees. So we're working with this 30, 60, 90 special right triangle here. Okay. And you may need to go and refresh on your properties of special right triangles. If you do, I'll post some links in the video description. So check those out, unit circle basics. But we should know once we've been doing exact values for a little bit that our X coordinate for this triangle on the unit circle is square root of three over two and our y coordinate is 1 half. Once you have those coordinates, you are ready to make your calculation. So that's the final step C for calculate. And on the unit circle, the cotangent of an angle is going to be simply the x coordinate divided by the y coordinate. So we have root three over two divided by 1 half. Now if you need to do a little bit of scratch work here, you can. So that's square root of three over two divided by a fraction, so multiply by the reciprocal cross cancel out that common factor of two, and we're left with the square root of three as our value. We know from step two, this is gonna be negative, and so we found that the cotangent of five pi over six is negative square root of three. I'll post a lot more worked examples of exact values using this method, um, so be sure to check those out. Link will be below. Keep on practicing exact values. It takes a while, but once you have done enough of them, all of these calculations become second nature so that you won't even really have to write out your work. You'll just know what it should simplify to. Thanks for watching and good luck.